Are you curious how the new Mavic Air 2 from DJI compares to like 8 of its competitors, some of the best camera drones out there? Well, that's what you're gonna find in this video and more. Hi, I'm Paul from DronesGitter.com and in this video we are going over some of the main specs and compare them between most of the camera drones that are currently on the market, including the DJI Mavic Air 2, which in my opinion has been quite an industry disruptor, if uh, I may say so. We are going to compare the DJI Mavic Air 2 with the DJI Mavic Mini and the DJI Mavic Air Original, and also the Mavic 2 Pro, and also the Skydio 2 drone, the Otel Evo 2 and the Xiaomi Fimi X8. Ooh, that was quite a mouthful. Since I won't be able to compare every single spec in this video, I will leave a link down below where you will be able to download the complete table comparison with all the specs by entering your email. I do warn you that you should do this on a tablet or computer because it is indeed a huge table. Now let's get started. Number 1. Camera and Bitrate Let's speak about the most exciting stuff, the camera. There is no doubt that you should always first look for how stable a drone records. However, these are all pretty much on the same level. They all come with really good 3-axis stabilization gimbals, which are basically on par with one another. As you can see on the graphic on the left, the resolution and frame rate definite winner is the Ota Evo 2 for sure. However, keep in mind that resolution isn't everything. Camera quality isn't always about the number of pixels. However, you might want to take into account the frame rate they record in. And in this matter, the Mavic Air 2 is above every single drone DJI has released so far, coming with 4K 60p and not only that, but also 240 FPS in 1080, so quite incredible slow motion if you need it. The Skydio 2 can also shoot in 60p 4K, which is quite well suited to the purpose of this drone. If you don't know about it, it's basically made for sports, so shooting slow motion can make for a great composition in that situation. The Mavic Mini, although it shoots only 2.7K, is plenty for most people, and frankly, I usually edit my drone videos in 2.7K anyway, as 4K strains my computer a bit too much. So if resolution isn't the only thing to look for in a camera drone, then what else? A really good spec to take note of is the bitrate. Bitrate is measured in megabits per second and is basically the bandwidth of information a drone can take in through the camera at once. This translates into more picture and video details. It's not the single most important factor, but certainly something you should take note of. For some perspective, for those of you who know about the DJ Spark, it comes with 24 megabits per second, compared to over 100 in some of the more recent drones. It was still a pretty great camera drone, don't get me wrong, but not quite on par. Again, the Mavic Air 2 is on par with the Auto Evo 2, both with 120 megabits per second. Just keep in mind that the Auto Evo 2 is quite a bit more expensive than the Air 2. By the way, I do have the smallest prices I could find online for all these drones that are mentioned. You can find them down in the description. I do get a small commission fee for some of them, so please consider buying from those links as it won't cost you anything, but you will keep supporting this channel. Another similarity between the Auto Evo 2 and the Mavic Air 2 is the type of sensor. They both have the half-inch Sony IMX586, which is slightly superior to the previous smaller sensor in drones like the Mavic Pro or the Mavic Air 2, especially in terms of how much light it gets in. But the definitive winner in terms of low-light shooting is the 1-inch DJI Mavic 2 Pro. More details about the lens, photo and video size and such can be found in the table in the description. Number 2. Range well, everyone likes to talk about range, but sometimes people just forget that Europe even exists. And that is a bit of a difference. And there is a reason I'm saying that. The range actually differs when it comes to Europeans, or at least drones that are bought in Europe. So I'm going to put the graphic both in FCC range as well as in CE range for Europe, as the range is smaller in almost all cases for Europe. The definite winner in this category is again the new DJI Mavic Air 2 with 10 kilometers of range, something we haven't seen before in any drone that I know of at least. Sure you might not take it that far, as you probably won't have the battery to get it back, but that also means a better signal and better connection when you fly closer but have some interference. However, most drones on this list have a pretty good range. The big difference is made in drones that have Wi-Fi instead of DJI OcuSync, because the connection is poorer and the Europe range is even less. So check the table on the side if you want to see which one is which. Number 3. Battery life. 
another really popular spec and I was actually thinking that this year Drone Battle Life has reached its peak. But it doesn't seem so as the Mavic Air 2 has beaten another record, at least in the DJI drones lineup, as it can fly up to 34 minutes in perfect conditions. If you want to know the actual flight time of every drone in real life conditions, then subtract about 2 to 3 minutes from the overall numbers you see here. The clear winner on this list is the Auto Levo 2 with a 40 minute battery life, which is quite impressive. However, keep in mind that this is quite a big sized drone, even compared to the Mavic 2 Pro. Also, know that the bigger the drone, the bigger the battery, so it's more expensive to buy a bigger battery, of course. Number 4. Noise. Unfortunately, I don't have all the data compared for all the drones. However, I have personally tested all the DJI drones and compared how many decibels each one has. I even have a video where I compare the noise levels and the stability in the air. You can check it in the corner right now. So the difference in noise level between these drones is quite substantial, especially considering the pitch of the noise. So, for example, a drone like the original Mavic Air is super annoying to listen to and at the same time very loud. But it's annoying because it has a high-pitched sound and loud because it doesn't have silent propellers. Newer drones like the Mavic 2 Pro are still loud, let's say, but they do have silent propellers and a much better noise with lower pitch. The Mavic Mini is also a great drone when it comes to sound. I expected it to be much more annoying, but it wasn't half bad. Number 5. Weight. I wanted to have a look when it comes to weight too, because I wanted to emphasize both the fact that the DJI Mavic Mini is under 250 grams, which means you won't require to register it almost anywhere in the world, including the USA. The Mavic Air 2 isn't spared of any regulation, or registration for that matter, but it's not that big in size, which makes it also more compact and easier to travel with. So I say you should have a good look at this table and keep in mind the weight difference if you're someone who travels a lot and wants a package that's easier to use. Number 6. The controllers. This is not really a general drone specification, but I do think the controllers of these drones uh, are quite different, so uh, let's see how they differ between each other. I will go through the pluses and minuses of the main ones. For example, the controller that comes with the DJI Mavic Air 2 has changed the look and feel of the typical DJI controller quite a lot. The classical Mavic transmitter was more like a small joystick in the past models and that wasn't really a bad thing. However, I do think it's an improvement. The new controller, although it looks a bit bigger, it's quite flat, so it can be easily stored and has the amazing advantage of not having to deal with putting your phone in between the arms of the old controller. It was clumsy for me, had to remove the phone cover and sometimes it wouldn't connect properly because I feel like the design was bad. Now you just put the phone on the top bracket and connect the cable easily. I also like how it has a more ergonomic shape and feels better in the hands. The controller for the Auto Evo 2 and 1 is also pretty special, as it comes with a built-in screen. It isn't the biggest screen we've seen so far, true, it's just 3 inches, but it does its job well, that's what she said. And since you can't use a tablet, you can't complain you don't have enough screen real estate. The Xiaomi Fimi X8 also has a controller that I'm really happy with. It has a lot of space to put any size phone and even some small tablet, and the quality is just great. The Skydio 2 differs substantially, since you'll have to buy the controller separately, as in you'll have to choose between the beacon controller, which is basically like a magic wand that will let you show the drone where you want it to go, again perfect for follow me and sports, or you can have the controller for more precise movements. By the way, the professional DJI Smart Controller will also work with the DJI Mavic Air 2 and I think it's simply great that you don't even have to connect your phone to it. If you have more questions about the Mavic Air 2 or want to hear some stuff you might not know about it before you buy, I do suggest you watch my video with 31 facts and questions about the DJI Mavic Air 2. You can click here in the corner or down in the description. It will be helpful, trust me. Again, you can find the complete article with even more specs with all these drones compared, the whole table with all the specs compared in one spot that you can download by putting your email, all in the description down below. So you went out and got yourself a drone or plan to get one, but what if I told you that you can actually make a lot of money with these and you don't have to be an expert? The most frustrating thing that me and some of my videographer friends have been through is just searching on YouTube forums or Facebook groups just to learn bits of information about drones, but since everybody and their dad has a drone these days, 
you need to stand out. The biggest shift in terms of knowledge and progression happened about a year ago and it was all in a weekend, when I discovered my first cinematography course from my now online mentor Alex Harris. This guy filmed and directed all over the world and got into drones even before they were popular. He made a complete course on cinematography, custom flight and gimbal settings that can help you to get way better footage, shooting flat and situational color grading, how to edit 4K videos on old PCs, what equipment you need and most importantly exactly how to find clients and make them pay you a lot for your time no matter where you live in the world. If you want to get $100 off from this complete course that will change your life, click the link down in the description or right here at the top and you will find a lot more information about what the course is all about. And if you're interested in getting my free guide with the top 9 cinematic drone moves that can make you stand out, click right here at the top. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions whatsoever and I'll make sure to answer as fast as possible. See ya later alligator!